If you have an electric cutting machine that can cut SVG files, then you can cut your own circle template for quilling. I'll leave a link below this video where you can download my free files. Here are the two templates I've cut. They both look similar on top, and if you look from the side, the one on the left is made of six layers of cardstock. I'm going to be using this one for my quilling strips that are 1 8 inch in width. The template on the right is cut from two layers of mat board. I'm going to be using this thicker one for quarter inch width quilling strips. Why would anyone go to this extent to cut their own circle template when you can just buy one? This one is from Quilt Creations and it's nice quality. It comes with a cork board, but it doesn't have a lot of increments in between all the sizes. The plastic layer on top is shallow, so my coils tend to spring out. This dollar store template only has one of every size, so it doesn't help if you want to make multiples of the same size at the same time. It has too many circles I don't need. These are too small and I just don't need a circle that's 10.5 centimeters. To keep the coils from springing out, I just add adhesive squares to raise it up, and then I put it on top of a cork trivet, but it does end up bouncing a bit, and that's not a deal breaker, but it's not great. So for years, I've juggled between these two solutions, but not loving either. This is finally a version I do love. What I love best is that I've listed the length of quilling strip needed to fill the circle, plus a handy ruler down the side. I also have the diameter in both inches and millimeter on the right. Since I've used a solid base layer, I don't have any bounce. There are multiples of each size, and I didn't use any plastic to make this, so I'm not hurting the environment. So if you happen to be a hybrid crafter like me, loving both quilling and die cutting, please leave me a comment with the word hybrid down below so I know I'm not alone. Okay, let's get started on how to make this. I have a Cricut Explore Air cutting machine, so that's what I'll be showing you how to use. And just a note here, I don't have all the answers, so if you have tips or experience you can share, please leave a comment below so we can all learn and improve together. I'd like to start by explaining how the digital files work together. Here's a list of machines that are also SVG compatible. You can just pause the video here and take a look and see if yours is here. Here are the three files you'll find in my download, A, B, and C. I've named the beginning part of the file name all the same. And then after the dash, you'll see that it says print, cut top, and cut bottom. So I hope that makes it pretty obvious. For the first one, we're going to print this PDF template onto cardstock. You'll notice there are no circles printed on it because I'm going to cut them out. So I don't want any printed circles in the way. For file B, this is the SVG file that you'll import into your cutting machine software to cut the circles out of your cardstock. The circles are the exact size shown in the printed template. For file C, I'm going to use this file to cut larger circles. Why make the bottom circles larger? Because then I don't have to worry about lining up the circles perfectly when I glue all these layers together. When you allow your coil to unwind, it's only going to touch a single layer on the top. Now that I've explained how the files work together, let me show you the making of method one, cutting a circle template with cardstock. Step one, print the PDF template onto cardstock. Step two, import the file cut top into design space. Load your printed template. And if you look closely, you'll see that I added a tiny little line at the top left here. This is because I needed to register to start cutting at the top left of my adhesive mat. And if I didn't add this line, it would start cutting the circles at the top left corner. If you manually move the circles down, you can't be precise in telling exactly where you want the machine to start cutting. Now let's look at the cutting mat. Even though the adhesive starts at zero, it doesn't actually start cutting until a quarter inch down and a quarter inch to the right. And you can tell that because it's really well worn right here, this groove right here. And you can see how there's parts missing of my adhesive. Now this means it's a very well used mat. So when it gets to this state, I don't tend to use this area to cut anymore because I could risk 
an air pocket uh, because the adhesive is not grabbing my material and if there is an air pocket the blade can catch and tear. So when it gets to this well-loved state I actually turn it around and use this opposite corner instead. You can see here there's a lot more adhesive material still left in this corner and because you can see the well-worn area isn't there to indicate to me exactly where to cut. So when I have a situation like this, let me show you how I get around that. So what I do is lay down some washi tape along the top and left side. You can also use masking tape or painting tape. Then I go into Cricut Design Space software and make an 8.5 by 11 inch rectangle. And I make sure that I leave it at the top left and then I cut that out. Now I can remove the washi tape and voila! Now I know exactly where to place my printed sheet. So I know what you're thinking. Why didn't they just make the machine cut exactly where the adhesive starts? Well look what happens when I put the adhesive mat in between the guides. See how there's some shifting back and forth? That's to allow for some user error. We're human and we might not load our mat perfectly, so they're giving us some wriggle room. So when I cut my washi tape, I made sure I loaded my mat carefully along the left guide and not just throw it into my cutter. When I go to cut my circle template, I'll again load it with care and be mindful of how I'm aligning with the guides to achieve the most consistent cuts possible. Now that I've cut my circles out of my top layer, I'm going to import the last file and cut that out of just regular cardstock. And after I've cut that out, I'll lay it on top of my first layer and you can see that the circles are larger than the first layer. And if yours looks like this, then you've done it right. Now you can cut as many of these layers as you want and you're going to decide for yourself how thick of a layer you want that to be. I'm using 80 pound cardstock here and I've already glued together four layers of the cardstock that you can see right here. So now with this layer here that'll make it five and then one more layer will make it six layers and that's about the depth that I want for coiling strips that are 1 8 inch wide but you decide for yourself how thick that you'd like that to be. When I'm gluing these layers together, what I tend to do is just run a stream of glue along this top area here. And then using my fingers, I put them through the holes and let my fingers help align these holes up. And I press this together just on this one edge. And again, just double check all these holes, make sure, you know, everything is lining up the way I want it to align because we can't quite trust these edges because as I explained you know there was a little hint of shifting on the mat so I trust here better than I trust here. I hope that makes sense. So we're just going to make sure that that stream of glue is secure and once we feel that you know it's had some time to come together that's when you can lift this up and apply glue on the rest of these areas and doing it this way it allows you to not be stressed out about trying to align so much with glue on the entire surface. Now that all the bottom layers are stuck together I'm ready to glue the top layer on top and in the past we were aligning using these holes in this case that won't work because this layer, these holes are smaller than these ones. So in this instance, I'm going to now align to the edges of my cardstock as much as I can. So just to remind, remind you, the holes here on the top are not going to align, right? So after you glue this layer to all these layers, I would suggest that you put them all under a stack of heavy books and let it dry overnight. You want to let the glue set with the pages all flat because you want to allow any of the bowing that happens with paper and glue, moisture, things like that, to just set itself flat while it's drying. And if you skip this step, you might end up with like a slightly bowed template and that's just not going to work for us. After you've let your template dry overnight, you can choose to glue that to a cork board if you want to have 
like a permanent kind of solution. As for myself, to be honest with you, I actually prefer sometimes to use this with and without the cork. So sometimes I just actually prefer to use my table surface as the backdrop for this rather than the cork itself. Now for method two, I'll show you how to make your template from mat board. Steps one and two are the same as shown in method one. Step three, import the last file, C, cut bottom. In method one, I showed you the small line I made at the top left corner for registration. Now that makes sense for a pre-cut sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Since my mat board was manually cut down from a very large sheet, I'm going to ask my Cricut to cut this sheet to size as well. So for method two, this is why my files have a rectangular outline. This was my first time cutting mat board with my Cricut Explore Air, so I researched the Cricut website to find out more information, and I'll leave you a link below the video. Cricut refers to these as star wheels. They help keep materials from shifting during cutting, but when we cut thick materials like mat board, they can leave track marks. So let me show you how to move them over. Step four, turn off the Cricut. Now you can move the carriage out of the way to access the star wheels, and you can move it either to the left or right. Grab a star wheel and gently move it to the right. It took a bit of effort the first time, and I would avoid touching the roller on the back. I had to wash my hands quite thoroughly after that. Step five, cut your mat board about 10 by 12 inches. Since my strong grip mat is extremely used, I also added masking tape along the edges to make sure my mat board didn't budge a single bit. Step six, I used a deep blade on the last setting before custom, so my Cricut would cut each shape twice before moving on to the next circle. After you're done cutting your mat board, you can move these wheels back into equal distance apart. Step seven, now you're ready to glue the layers together, and I tend to glue the whole surface at one time instead of how I showed in method one, because you can't peel up part of the mat board. Again, let it dry overnight under a stack of books to make sure it doesn't have any bowing. I really want to continue improving my tutorials, so if you end up making your own circle template for quilling using my files, please do let me know what you think. If you're tempted to buy an electric cutting machine, I do want to explain that it's not magical every time. The blade can snag if your material isn't stuck on the mat well. Sometimes I don't have it on the right setting, and the material doesn't cut all the way through. I love using my Cricut Explorer for quilling, and I make many other paper projects too. So even though I do waste some material, I can't live without my cutter. Previously, I've owned the Silhouette SD, so my experience is limited to just these two cutters. There are plenty of cutters on the market, each with their own abilities, their own pros and cons. Please do your own research before deciding what model is right for you.